Hello students. We've been talking for a while now about how important crystals are and what their primary role is in the formation of minerals and how they control rock systems and things like this. Uh, one of the best ways to learn how to do this is to actually grow your own crystals uh, and to actually observe how they come about and, and, and what kind of predictions we can make about them. And there's a very simple experiment that we can do one so easy, actually, that we can even bring in very young assistants, just like the one behind me. This is my stepdaughter, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. <laughs> um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be growing uh, our own crystals at home. Um, and we're going to be using a very simple, very inexpensive set of, uh, of, of uh, chemicals to be able to make them. Many of them are probably already in your home. And uh, you can start making predictions on how to make other crystals if you chose to do so. So let's go ahead and start our experiment and learn how to make our own crystals. By the way, you're welcome to do this and follow along at home. So this is the recipe for our virtual field trip, which is uh, what we're entitling Growing Crystals at Home. You will need borax. What is borax? Borax is a, it's a, basically a chemical, it's a detergent booster that you can purchase at almost any place. I bought this at Ace Hardware. And I think I paid for a, almost a five pound uh, box of it. I think I paid $7. Um, you can order it online. You can get it at almost any housewares section and probably even at your grocery store. You might even have it at your home. Um, so that will be the main uh, uh, chemical that we'll be doing and we'll be actually growing borax crystals. So we need to actually have some borax powder. We'll also need a large bowl or vase. We're liking to use a large bowl for ours. A stick, or in our case, we're actually using this uh, uh, a skewer that can be bought at any store, but any stick from outside or even a pen or a pencil will be sufficient. Some scotch tape, which we see right here. Pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners are these things that you can get at almost any craft store. Uh, again, I bought this at Ace Hardware, um, and I think I paid a dollar for the entire package. Um, strings or thread, um, any type of string or thread, this is a very important component. You can't do the experiment without it. Um, as a matter of fact, there's our little ball of string right there. Uh, measuring cups and tablespoon. So here's our me measuring cups. In our case, we're going to use a four cup and a tablespoon over here. Uh, but you could just use the regular small cups or you can uh, uh, you know, measure it any way you want. You just need to make sure that you know about where four cups is. And the reason why is because we need to be able to measure out four cups of boiling water. Okay, so this is basically our equipment uh, set. And I have some water boiling on the um, stove right now. So we're going to go ahead and start putting together our crystal growing kit. So the first step um, that you do with your pipe cleaner, um, well, you could make the any shape you want. So I'm going to do a um, thing like this. You just do it kind of like that. Yeah, so that's the first part of the step that I'm going to do of making my shape. And the crystals will grow around the pipe cleaner like that? Um, well, yeah, they will grow like on the outside and cover the whole pipe cleaner with cool. crystals. Okay, let's see what the final, the, the final uh, pipe cleaner looks like. Okay, so I got a couple of shapes here, um, and I've chosen to use this one. Um, so, so after you've made the shapes that you choose, you, you're just going to go get the string and just tie it. So after I've tied the string to, to the shape where you want to make, we, I cut it to about 18 inches long. And this little piece right here, we, we don't want any dangling pieces. So I'm just going to cut it to the, um, cut it so that it's not there. So now you want to get a piece of tape, a little piece of tape before you do the string because it's easier. Okay, so... You get your string that is attached to the shape, and it is important to put it to wrap it around in the, right in the middle of the stick. So you want to wrap it around the middle of the stick, 
like that. And then you want to get your piece of tape and tape it to the, the stick and the string, like that. So at this point we're going to begin making our borax solution uh, that we're going to be growing our crystals in. I just wanted to say on safety issues that borax is actually considered a non-toxic substance. You can pick it up, you can play with it in your hands. It's uh, got a toxicity that, uh, according to some uh, um, material uh, safety data sheets, of uh, approximately as dangerous as table salt. So you kind of get the idea. You don't want to eat too much, just like you don't want to eat too much salt. Uh, borax is not something that you want to be eating a whole lot of, and you won't find it very, very tasty. But anyways, don't be too concerned about holding it in your hand or, or working with it. The reason why we're using it is because it is essentially a non-toxic um, uh, chemical. Uh, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and start making our solution. I've taken this borax out of the box, so you might and you might not have this kind of bowl with this masher thing. So you can get a fork or a spoon and get a regular bowl, and if it forms like this, then you could hit it or mash it to make a powder. So I'm just gonna kind of make it a powder. Okay, so now that we have actually powdered our borax, and this is actually how it usually forms in these, uh, or it comes in these boxes, you usually are able to just pour it out the side. This is a, an older box, so it kind of solidified on us and turned into clods. Uh, we powdered it, and uh, so it's ready to put into the water. Now I've got hot water already boiling on the uh, stove, so I'm going to go ahead and put uh, four cups of water into my dish over here. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, you could measure out four, four cups and put it straight into the bowl. I'm just going to go ahead and transport it from my stove over here. So be back in a minute. So here I've got uh, my four cups of just boiling water. You can see the steam is still coming off of it. Um, and I am pouring it into my, into my big bowl here. Oops, spilling some of it on the, on the table. That's okay, that's okay. Just, just hot water, just to make sure you don't put your hands in it. And so for every cup, now Roxy could do this as well, but since I'm closest, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. For every cup of water, you wanna add about three tablespoons of borax. So that would be one, and I'll go ahead and put in, so three times, uh, three tablespoons times four cups is going to be about 12 tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that borax to that water. So we've got 12 tablespoons of borax in our container, and we start to, to stir it. You'll notice it turn kind of a milky white color as the borax begins to dissolve into the water. But the main thing that we want to look out for is to see if our crystals are dissolving all the way. And right now, if I, especially if I look out over on the side, I can see that there's a few crystals at the very bottom. I'm going to keep stirring it. It looks like I can even add some more borax to it. So it looks like most of those crystals dissolved. So I want to keep adding borax until the crystals do not dissolve anymore. So at this point to our four, to our four cups of water, we've added about 14 tablespoons. And it looks like, uh, it's gonna be hard to see here, but at the bottom here we have crystals that are just not quite dissolving, which is exactly what we want. Oh, yep, yep there's a couple in there. That's exactly what we want. We want it just to the point where the crystals no longer dissolve. That means that the water is saturated with borax. It means that it can't hold anymore. So that's exactly where we want it. Now we have to suspend our pipe cleaner shape into the water. So I'm gonna get, two, we're gonna get two pieces of tape. And we're gonna get we're gonna wrap this up because we have to okay and we're gonna put it right in the middle of the water and we're gonna put the stick like that so it's 
touching touching the sides of that. But most importantly, it's not allowed to touch the bottom. You have to suspend it in the water so it can't touch the sides or the bottom. Yeah, so it has to be basically floating in the middle of the That's water. That's right. We're suspending it off the bottom. Okay, yeah. and then go ahead and use so, those pieces of tape. Yeah, we tape the end of the stick to the bowl, or, yeah, to the bowl. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, and then we do the other side. And... And now it's going to go ahead and start crystallizing, hopefully, on our thing. Oh, looks oh, like it, it moved looks... a little bit, so we need to fix it. Okay. But we're going to go ahead and repair that and start the experiment. So here we see the final product of our, or at least our final apparatus. And we see the stick and it's wrapped up. It's got our pipe cleaner and it's suspended in the water. Now notice that the water has cleared itself. And that it is suspended, it's off the ground, and um, it's actually going to begin crystallizing almost. Uh, as a matter of fact, it should be doing it right now. Now, there's some one other cool optional step we can do if we want to do it, and that is to do what? Um, you could dye, put some food coloring in to dye the crystals if you want. It's optional. Yeah, that's optional. So we actually have some dye over here. We've done some of these crystals already in the past that were clear but we're going to add some blue dye to this one just to see how it turns out now we added eight drops of food coloring um and it, it needs to be the the bowl needs to be put somewhere where it could be untouched for at least 24 hours yeah so we will see you guys in 24 hours so we're back and we've been uh growing crystals in our home. Um, this is the product of our crystal growing effort. Uh, we actually let this sit in the liquid for 48 hours, uh, but the crystals actually stopped growing after 24. And the reason why is because of a, uh, a chemistry phenomenon known as equilibrium. So the crystals actually came to equilibrium with the, with the solution. Now we have our solution over here and our crystals. And one of the things you'll notice is not only do we get crystals growing here on our pipe cleaner, but also throughout the bowl as well. Uh, the great thing about this is the to toxicity of this is so low that you can actually just throw this away right into your kitchen sink. Um, and uh, the blue is just food coloring. It's, it's completely harmless. So you can put it in your kitchen sink or flush it down the toilet or you can put it in your backyard. It doesn't, you can dump it out anywhere. And the crystals will wash right out. Uh, so, back to this, you might note right away, well, wait a minute. When we started growing these crystals, we grew it in a blue solution, but my crystals here aren't very blue. In fact, when I look carefully at my pipe cleaner, all the blue is really just in the areas where the pipe cleaner is, but the crystals themselves are perfectly white. And, unbeknownst to you, we had also crystallized in a pure, clear solution uh, this other set of borax crystals, and you'll notice that the crystals themselves are almost exactly the same color. And the reason why is the blue has got to take advantage of some impurities to exist here. Uh, one of the reasons why we have an issue with these two is, or reason why the crystals didn't turn blue, is because it turns out that the blue uh, food coloring is incompatible in the crystal structure or the lattice of the borax mineral. Um, over here we've got the so eventually I'll throw this away, probably in about 10 minutes. Uh, over here, we have the chemistry of borax. Borax is two atoms of sodium, four atoms of boron, seven atoms of oxygen, and 10 molecules of water. The food coloring, on the other hand, and this is a very large molecule actually, but food coloring is much larger. Carbon has 37 carbons. 34 hydrogens, 2 nitrogens, 2 sodiums, 9 oxygens, and 3 sulfurs. Um, as this thing crystallizes, there's just nowhere in that crystal lattice for the blue food coloring to uh, find its way in. It's just way too large. And this is a way too small of a system. 
Uh, so as a consequence, it didn't really matter that I put the blue in there. All it did was color the pipe cleaner slightly blue. The end result is going to be these beautiful white crystals that you can get so away with. So what I want to do now is actually explain why uh, borax forms the crystal structure that it does. We've talked about the, the, the chemistry a little bit and why the blue doesn't go in. Uh, but really quickly, let's describe the, uh, the, the molecule itself. And basically, we talked about it having four uh, uh, borons, which we'll put with the letter B. And the borons in this lattice try to actually get as much distance between them as they can. And they separate themselves through a very interesting system of oxygens in the middle. Like this. And there's actually another oxygen also here in the middle, which I'll offset for a reason you'll see here in a moment. And they're all connected like this. And then we have another one. It's in three dimensions, kind of sticking out of the board at you. And it connects like so. And at the end of these are a form of water called a hydroxyl which is an OH molecule. And those OHs allow bonding to occur to other parts of the crystal lattice. So it's pretty cool. And then of course, in between these areas, you'll find sodiums. So what does that have to do with the, the crystal itself? Well, you'll notice that it forms basically a, a, a pyramid up on the top and a pyramid down, down on the bottom. And when we look down over here, that is exactly what we see. Here is a pristine borax uh, crystal. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this virtual field trip. Um, if anybody decides to go ahead and do this, by all means, take pictures of your crystals and post them on the discussion board. I'd love to see them. Uh, thank you, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me.